Greetings and welcome back. In the previous lecture, we got our button wired up, so when we click it, it updates the money, adds one to it. And uh, our graph is starting to get a little more complicated. We have our startup here, and it's a little bit not just the startup. We're reusing this part here where we set the text of our money. We're reusing it. So this is kind of um, the start it just gets fired off. Really, this is a set the money. Kind of like set the money text. So we start off, that just triggers it so that the very first time it fills it with zero. But really what we're doing every time we make money, we calculate the money we make right here, and then we update the text in the UI. And that's really what this is. Let's say update the, te the, the money, the text in the UI. All right, so now one of the things that we want in an idle game is some kind of timer. We don't want this thing, as soon as we click it, to just keep going. And so let's go ahead and see how we can do that in Bolt. And we're not going to worry about making it real pretty. We're going to refactor this later into different graphs. But for now, we're going to go ahead and just set it up in this existing graph. So if you think about the timer, the way it works is we click the button, and then we want to wait here, have something go down, you know, two, three seconds, and then after the timer's done, then that's when we will actually update the variable and give ourselves the money. So let's do that. It's very simple in Bolt. I just add unit and just type timer. It's very intuitive. What would you think? Well, let's use a timer. And timer has a ton of inputs and outputs on it, but they're so intuitive, you almost don't even have to think about it. I can just click and drag here and say, when we click this on button click, what do we want to do? Well, we want to start the timer. Very straightforward. Here's the duration. So let's give it three seconds for the timer. And then when the timer's done, well, where do we want to go? We're done. We want to set the variable. It is literally that simple, that we are done. We have set up our timer so that when we click the button up here, it's going to sit and wait. And you'll see it here, wait. And after three seconds, there it goes, fires off. Do it one more time so you can see it. Click, wait three seconds, it fires off. So without a doubt, I have to say that is one of the simplest things I've ever ever seen when setting up a timer in, inside of, of a game engine like this. And in addition, look at all these great things we have here. We have the elapsed percent, and we also have the tick, and the tick just means every frame, not necessarily every frame. They might have in the timer a tick of 1 60th of a second or something like that, but whenever this tick fires off, it's going to come out this output. And well, what do we want to do when that happens? Well, what we want to do is we want to update the value of a slider. We want to have a slider that shows the progress of this timer. So I can actually type in slider, and you'll see that we got yeah, it's not really giving us what we want. I happen to know that we want to update the value of the slider. And so if I type this slider dot value, it's going to bring it up. Um, but regardless, if I had just typed slider, I would have, you know, could have looked through this thing and eventually would have found the value down at the bottom, you know, somewhere. But if you know what you're looking for, it helps. Slider dot value. And we don't have a slider yet, but so it's in yellow. So notice how it's like, I don't know what to do about that. Um, but every tick, we're going to update it, and we're going to update it with the elapsed percent, just like that. And that's all we have to do to uh, update our slider. And um, things are a little tight. Let me move these over like that, and we'll our slider there so it's just a little bit got a little room to breathe now let's go ahead and make our slider by coming into the canvas right clicking come to UI choose slider and let's drag it up so it's a little closer to where it would be normally and we're just basically gonna have it so when we click this the slider goes and so then what we have to just do is simply drag the slider down into this slot here so it knows which slider to use. And that is all there is to it. When this 
on button click happens it's going to start the timer and it's going to fire off the tick every tick here to tell it to do this set and that's going to make this thing come back into here and pull the elapsed percent into the slider and it just so happens that our slider already is by default uh, the, the value is determined 0 to 1. 1 being 100 percent the slider is all the way at the end 0 there's nothing on the slider and it's all the way at the beginning and it all makes sense when we run here so Let's make this a little smaller so we can see everything that we need to and run. And you'll see now when I say click me that our slider goes. At the end of three seconds, the money happens. I can do it again and it'll keep doing it. And you can actually see the ticks there now of, as they fire off as it's doing its update. And, and you can see the numbers as it's feeding the values into the slider. Remarkably easy, isn't it? Now, obviously what's happening here, let's run it just real quick one more time. You'll see that when it gets to the end, it stays there because there's our completed is just going and updating the money. Our completed's not resetting the slider. So I would advise you to pause the video, take a second, and see if you can figure out how to reset the slider back to zero once the timer's completed. All right, hopefully you paused the video and tried to do this yourself. If you didn't, um, I'll show you how. I'm gonna right click this set slider value and just duplicate it so I don't have to find it again. And then I'm gonna take this completed node and run it through this slider set value so it'll set it back to zero and then I can just send the flow on its way so it's just basically when we're done we're resetting the slider to zero so let's run it again I'll do a click me it's running the sliders done it fires off the completed and sets the slider back so now we have a slider that returns back and the money goes up at the end so remarkably that is the core mechanic for an idle game right there now we're obviously going to expand on it we're going to be able to buy multiple stores we're going to have to put a lot more game architecture behind this in fact we don't necessarily want a lot of things that are here to be in the game manager because the game manager is handling stores here and we're going to have multiple stores and each store is going to have its own timer and each store is going to have different profit and so forth but this was a way to show you how quickly we can make the the core graphs we need we just have to re-architect our game a little bit and refactor it as we start adding more complexity it happens all the time but hopefully you followed along this far i would highly encourage you now as an assignment here to you know stop this recording open up a brand new project and see if you can recreate this basic gameplay on your own where you click the button the timer goes off it makes the slider go and at the very end adds to the money so go ahead experiment with it yourself in the next lecture we're going to re-architecture this thing and start making it so that it can handle multiple stores and not just one timer going uh, with one click me but starting to set up the architecture to handle multiple stores in our idle game